Hello, everybody. Welcome to Washington Worship. Lo siento, no personas, tú hablas español, sermonos, uh, es en inglés. Lo siento. I will be preaching from Mark chapter 8, 27 through 30. And you can follow along with me in either the English or Spanish Bibles available with me, the Gospel of Mark tracks on the counter or on your Bible app on your phone. During the sermon, we ask that all conversations be kept to a minimum, please. Let us pray. Holy Father, right and true, bless these words you have given. May they edify you and your Son, our Messiah, Jesus. Amen. Read along with me in Mark chapter 8, 27 through 30. And Jesus went out along with his disciples to the villages of Caesarea Philippi. And on the way, he was asking his disciples, saying to them, Who do people say that I am? And they told him, saying, John the Baptist. And others say, Elijah. But others, one of the prophets. And he continued asking them, But who do you say that I am? And Peter answered and said to him, You are the Christ. And he warned them not to tell he warned and he warned them to tell no one about him. Jesus took his disciples with him and went to the villages of Caesarea Philippi. And as they were walking, Jesus asked his disciples, Who do people say that I am? This question could even be asked, Who do you say that Jesus is? The disciples said that the people thought he was John the Baptist. For Herod had thought Jesus was John the Baptist, raised from the dead to haunt him. Or Elijah, as foretold by the prophets, and taught by the teachers that Elijah would return and announce the coming of the Messiah. Jesus proclaimed that John the Baptist was this Elijah, Matthew 11:14, who was a witness to bear witness about the light, so that all might believe through him, John 1:7. And when confronted by the priest, stated, "I am a voice of the wo I am a voice of one crying in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord." Or one of the prophets, as Moses foretold, "Yahweh your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among you, from your brothers. You shall listen to him." Deuteronomy eighteen fifteen. But the teachers taught that. It is the promise of a secession of prophets that should for many ages be kept in Israel. Besides the priests and Levites, their ordinary ministers, whose office it was to teach the Israelites God's law, they should have prophets, extraordinary ministers, to reprove them for their faults, remind them of their duty, and foretell things to come, judgments for warning, and deliverances for their comfort. Matthew Henry. But who do you say that Jesus is? Is he some genie who does your will at your command? Is he your boyfriend? Is he a verbal slur to profane in your heated moments or excitement? Is he the object of your hate or the comforter to satiate your justification of sin? Jehovah Witnesses say that Jesus is Michael the Archangel. He was the first creation of God. He came to earth as a man, died on a stake, and rose from the grave invisibly as a spirit. Jesus then returned invisibly to Brooklyn, New York in 1914 to head up the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society. Mormons teach that Jesus is the spirit brother of Satan. He was once a human being like you and I, but through good works, he evolved spiritually to become God. However, Jesus is just one God amongst a pantheon of gods all whom were once human and evolved to become gods themselves. Jesus was born to Mary through physical incest with his father, God, had sexual relations with her. Mormons teach that the blood of the cross of Christ are foolish and cannot fully atone for your sins. Christian Science and Mary Baker Eddy say that Jesus was only a man and that Christ is a divine idea. Furthermore, Jesus never did any supernatural miracles. He was simply showed people their mental illusions of sin, evil, illness, and disease. Christian science says that Jesus did not die and his resurrection was only in a spiritual sense. Sun Myung Moon, the Korean Messiah, 
claims that Jesus was a man who failed his divine mission. And he, Reverend Moon, is the second coming of Christ to unite the world under the banner, banner of the Unification Church. The Baha'i say that Jesus is only one of nine great world manifestations. He is not a unique path to salvation, and all religions are the same. Unitarians believe that Jesus was a good man who was mistakenly defiled, de deified by his followers. followers. Freemasonry teaches that Jesus was only a moral teacher, that he was no better than Buddha, Confucius, Moses, or Muhammad. They deny that Jesus was the light of the world and claim that Freemasonry is the true light of humanity. Scientology and L. Ron Hubbard claim that Jesus is a false dream. Spiritists say that Jesus is an advanced medium in the sixth sphere of astrological projection. Unity teachers teaches that Jesus is the man who perfected the divine idea. Rosicrucians claim that Jesus is the manifestation of cosmic consciousness. Mar Maharishi and Transcendental Meditation say that Jesus was an enlightened guru who never suffered or died for anyone. But Jesus asked his disciples, Who do you say that I am? And Peter responded, You are the Christ. Peter and the disciples were operating under the notion that the Messiah must be a temporal prince appearing in external pomp and power which the figure Christ made would not comport with. Matthew Henry. So how did Peter know this about Jesus? Matthew expounds more in this moment. Peter answered and said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus responds, Blessed are you, Simon Bar-Jonah, because flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. This is how you come to know who Jesus is. By the testimony of the Spirit of God, and the scriptures. Jesus is the proclaimed Messiah, the fulfillment of the promise of Yahweh to crush the head of the serpent, Genesis 3.15, and to bring an end to sin and death. He is the promised hope of salvation to all who believe. He is God, the second person of the Trinity, John 17.1 and 21. He is the one who justifies, for his death and resurrection were the sacrifice of sacrifices and atone for man's sin once and for all time. Jesus is the eternal Son of God, fully divine and fully human. He is the unique and sole mediator between God and humanity, as revealed in Scripture. Jesus is the life, and all other ways bring death. He is life and imparts eternal life to all who believe. Then I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. And he who sits on it is called Faithful and True. And in righteousness he judges and wages war. His eyes are a flame of fire, and on his head are many diadems, having a name written on him which no one knows except himself. And being clothed with a garment dipped in blood, his name is also called the Word of God. And the armies which are in heaven, clothed in fine linen, white and clean were following him on white horses and from his mouth comes a sharp sword so that with it he may strike down the nations and he will rule them with a rod of iron and he treads the wine presses of the wrath of the rage of god the almighty and he has on his garments and on his thigh a name written king of king and lord of lords and Jesus warned his disciples to tell no one about him, so that he reserved the publication of himself to be the Son of God until such time when, as the apostle said in Romans 1.4, he was declared so with power according to the spirit of holiness by his resurrection from the dead, Matthew Poole. Jesus came to save sinners. Sinners suppress the truth and hide in their darkness because they love darkness. They are unbelieving, vile, foolish, rebellious haters of God who have adopted the ideologies of this world and the doctrines of men. They have become slaves to their sexual desires, perverting the flesh and the mind and rebelling against the created order of God. They are doomed to condemnation and will be judged by Jesus and sent to hell where they will burn for eternity in the lake of fire. However, God so loved his creation, mankind, 
that He sent His Son, Jesus, who can forgive you of your sins and redeem you because He has the authority and power. Jesus brings eternal life to all who repent and believe. For Jesus bore all our sins. He bore all the sins of all who believe in Him. Jesus was born and lived a perfect life of obedience to God as a man. Jesus was condemned to be executed and die in the sinner's place. He suffered the totality of God's wrath upon Himself on the cross, which every sinner deserves, so that those who believe in Jesus may have peace with God. Jesus rose from the dead, conquering death and lives, and ascended to the right hand of God the Father. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And He is in your midst with us, offering you salvation. Repent and believe Jesus. I tell you, this world is, is getting worse. Did you watch the opening of the Olympics in France? It was Sodom. It was a horrible blasphemy as they mocked God in their, in their trans, transgender homosexual rendition of the Lord's Supper. This is the kind of actions that bring the wrath of God upon nations. And that's what He's going to do. And He does it by increasing the sin if you do not believe in Christ, know that you will die. And when you die, you will go to hell. You must know Christ. He must know you. You can go and say, Lord, Lord. But He will truly say to you, if you do not know Him, depart from Me, you workers of iniquity, for I never knew you. So be warned. Let us pray. Jesus, You are the one true God who came and to save people. All others, they are man or angel or of the evil one. Save these people from their sins and bless the food You have graciously provided. Amen.